All right, let's come back here to Lagos, Nigeria. Today, of course, is the deadline of off the face ban on the motorcycle or uh, commercial motorcycles, popularly called Okada, in six local government areas in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Now, while the compliance level at some areas seems moderate, probably due to the enforcement by authorities, compliance at other areas appears relatively low, as riders before now went about their normal activities unperturbed. Although the restriction in February 2020 affected just the riders, the new restriction affects both the riders and their passengers. I'm speaking with News Central TV's crew, a cross-section of the riders are wary of how to survive without the business, while passengers are worried about beating the usual Lagos traffic. All right, we have Joe Hansen. Joe is joining us in this conversation. Joe, what would you say are your thoughts as regards this update? I mean, we've all known for the past week or two, we've seen this day coming, the 1st of June, the day the official, um, the ban is officially taking effect. But it's been affected subtly in some areas even before today. Well, it has happened. Uh, what we've been waiting for has eventually taken place. Um, it seemed like the death of the sound engineer, David Moore, uh, which uh, actually sparked uh, this entire decision to be made by the uh, Lagos State Government. Uh, many have said that he was uh, some sort of a martyr after he actually was killed or lynched uh, in Lekki, a place where many have actually thought to be one of the safest places to actually live in. But that did not happen to him. He wasn't indeed safe. His life was not spared. And that led to this decision made by the Lagos State Governor and, of course, other residents' association there in Lekki and uh, other areas in Lagos. And... The ban has been affected. This morning, I was on my way to work, and I, all I could see was uh, everywhere was dry. And I asked myself a question. Is it that the bike riders were the ones who caused traffic? But let's take a look at the benefits and also the demerits of uh, such. First of all, the negatives. Um, will this, many are worried that this would give rise to insecurity. And insecurity in the sense that um, while they were busy, um, they were focused on doing their jobs. Now they say an idle man is a devil's workshop. So the riders will no longer have work to do, meaning that they will start thinking of engaging in vices that are indeed negative. The second thing we also want to look at is, um, are there alternative transport systems that have been put in place by the state government? Uh, so many people are asking, what's the alternative? Um, Kekena Pep, as we call it here in, in Nigeria, that's the tricycles. They do not ply the major highways. So therefore, what are the options for people to use to commute or to transport and move from point A to point B? Another thing we also want to look at is unemployment. These are the negatives, unemployment. There are no factories, as we know. Uh, Nigeria is not a producing state or nation. So people are asking, where do you want these riders or bikers to go to? Do they have something else to do? For the positives, I'm going to rush quickly and say that um, 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 Olive and Osalga, they are positive. Positives include that um, there would be uh, some sense of sanity in Lagos. Uh, you would agree with me. I mean, you all drive your cars. You know how dangerous it is to navigate and, you know, meander your way through these bike riders. Aside from sanity, there will also be other things that the state stands to benefit. There's also a business window. People need to start thinking of transport systems they can introduce. Aside from light oh. bus and so on, individuals, businesses can start thinking of what they can do. I mean, earlier today on the show, we did talk about the fact that the Lagos State Government, the ferry services has deployed more boats to ensure that we sort of try to mitigate the harshness that the absence of the Okada riders might cost on the transportation sector. So oh. uh, I guess we'll see how this plays out. There's not enough water between Falao Shibo and Freedom Way to take a boat ride. <laughs> but, and that's why people will take Okada or, you know, on, um, uh, Hakim Dixon. There's no water <laughs> there to take, to well, take a boat ride. Season, but... Maybe the, the boats will come in very handy. <laughs> that's how okay. Anyway, you need help. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to quickly mention, I know we need to go. Um, the Okada riders need to take some of the responsibility um, of, of the blame. They yeah. have been completely reckless mm -hmm. and they need to accept it. When mm -hmm. I say reckless, I mean it you know, in a thousand different languages. And they need to accept it, that they have completely gone beyond control. And so if the Lagos State government feels this is what is necessary, maybe there, there's some fine-tuning that needs to be done, but they need to take some of the blame. Absolutely. Um, but we'll definitely continue this conversation. I'm going to drive around at Lekki today and see what the difference is. Thank you so much, Joe, uh, for sharing that with us. No problem. See you guys right. soon.